Please welcome Director Daniel Fester. If, if that's if I could 
I agree with what you said, yeah. Um, how, how I played this seat, um, yeah, I, it was like I just had to identify that whatever I related to, to it in whatever way I could and, and try to be present to the text and to my fellow actors and um, just listen uh, to, to them. And I, I've got experienced versions, I suppose, of, those, of what that feels like. Um, the friend of is not my mother, and uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, no, I don't it's one of my mother. Yeah, she. Uh, but she has a very warm compassion. It was not only the idea of her that I had in my head. I think before we we started was was very different. It was I'd only seen her, you know, on the nanny and spinal tap and playing certain characters that were not necessarily warm or more maternal. And I, and I was so. It was such a nice. Relief almost to experience that from her. She, she's a very warm, compassionate person, and um, so I felt a real connection. And funny, I mean, like naturally, really funny. So we, we hit it off right away. So those were pretty easy scenes to do. I'd love to open it to questions from the audience and honor pigeons. Why did you decide to have Josh do the apology? You know, it's, that's another thing you, I realized when I was writing, just the idea of apology from the theme that just kept coming up over and over and over again, and how hard that is to do without qualifying it or something. Um, there's a woman who says it earlier on, you don't have to mean the apology. You could just say it. Maybe that would mean something to her. So you could argue it's ambiguous that if he even means it when he says it, and maybe he went into that meaning intending to apologize and authentically. My interpretation of it is that uh, she convinces him. She, the, you know, the movie is sort of book, bookended by the scene at the beginning where these students are just yelling at each other and not listening to each other at all. And at the end of the movie, it's a very, it's like Twitter, obviously, or something like that. And then, and then in the, the end is a really beautiful conversation of somebody who expresses their pain and makes it a genuinely teachable moment. And without attacking him and his character, she just tries to say, this is how I felt, whether you think it's valid or not, that's how I felt. And I'm enormously proud of that scene and Justice performance in it because I think when I watch it and when I edited it and there were so many ways you can read it that scene, she legitimately convinces him and makes him see something that his ego wouldn't allow him to see earlier and maybe the that the grandmother lets his arm down a little bit and I just thought that he would do it in, in that moment and I still go back and forth about the opening scene and whether he did was unforgivable or uncool or whatever. I, you know, I, I have different feelings about the movie every day and sometimes can I change my mind, but I think my final opinion now is that I, I could be, I didn't do it here, but I could have. Just not being aware of how it, that what I felt for that young woman, and I think things like me too, just the last three years, and be going to therapy a little bit, that just helped me see other people's feelings a little bit. So, I don't know if that was answering the question. <laughs> Also, we shot, we shot at the reverse angle on it. I had my fingers crossed behind my back. We <laughs> didn't see that. And, and he, he felt on his wrong. He was to leave the fingers in the knot. I mean, we felt it. It was let the audience decide. Stuff more when we're smoking and weed, and it, it kind of lends 
stuff to a more fluid, let's just see what happens, sort of thing. And we all, my, who played my brother, Mike and I know, known each other for years, and again, Kate and I, and I just hit it off right away, so we were really comfortable with each other. Sometimes you get an actor which you have to respect and just doesn't, isn't comfortable doing that, and wants to stick to the script, but we were fortunate in that everybody we were playing with, they were all pretty comfortable with, with throwing off tests. It's nice. That helped you, yeah. probably a fair answer to your question. How did you choose to use the brass choir during the death scene? So this movie was pretty low budget, and the strategy I've employed when that's the case is to find people who are really hungry and excited to do the job as opposed to somebody who's pissed they're not being paid enough or whatever. <laughs> and uh, somebody, the music supervisor introduced me to this trumpet player who lived in Los Angeles, who I listened to his music and liked it a lot. I don't totally understand the story, but apparently he was amazing. Like, he was like the man for a long time, but trumpet players, I guess, are very jockish, the way he was uh, described to me, and I think he did something rare. He blew out the muscles in his lungs and his chest for the rest of his life, and he was never able to play to the extent that he could before, so what he sort of invented for himself was almost a light, fluttery style that was part of that, and then he wrote that theme, and uh, it made me cry, so that was a pretty easy decision, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, he, he made the most of it. He's doing great. This is a good example of a scene that was definitely not improvised because I, I or what? Uh, I mean, Justin is so not ambitious. I'm sorry to disappoint all of you, but he is the least serious person in this room. We're really more relieved, some of you. Uh, <laughs> maybe a lobby in the tribe. Uh, <laughs> but I, he insisted that I, I ask for the specific, very specific bail, bail order. That to me sounded so repulsive. <laughs> Someone who just 
I have a thing you need to hear right now. And, and we've had like 25 screenings, and I've been shocked that there's been so little of that. So that's been a tremendous relief. But I would say the, the more maybe it's older white men who sort of seem to get uh, angry with the, the film or whatever. You want to be in here? I know you're in here. <laughs> no, it's, it's fun to try to pick up. So but if you're very keen to observe that there is a real generational difference between the sister and the students, yeah. I mean, the, the movie is, I'm not trying to appeal to conservatives and ask them to agree with me on anything. I'm giving up on doing that. It, the idea is liberals versus liberals, we need to like fucking get on the same page right now. We can't mess around. And so that seems like a huge safe space in this room. <laughs> I almost forgot about that. Single diner, though, it's like, you know, they're warring families who agree on 98% of things, and yet there's such an intense difference that is uh, both interesting and scary. Well, different approaches, too. I mean, there, one, I think, is one lives more, it, it exists maybe better um, in the in in Twitter culture, in the social media landscape, where there's not as much room or necessity, really, for a dialogue, for a back and forth. It's, I say my piece, and if you agree with me, you can. Block somebody, you can stop following somebody, and, I, uh, and so it creates these kind of culture bubbles and, and a heightened sense of yeah. tribalism. So I, I think those two different approaches are, they may even agree ultimately on the thing, but. Uh, I always like the kid was, she did a podcast, but even that's not a real version, as you know, this is a great podcast, but it's not a real conversation where you're bumping up against egos in the States, yeah. but it's still yeah. a very bubbly controlled yeah. environment. Did you say you're yeah. 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 We love it, we love it. So. <laughs> Thank you for this question. Those are my two uh, nieces in the movie in real life, and thank you. That's the reaction that I had. Um, and it's funny, the picture that's in the catalog that made you all come here, I have intentionally chosen, which is just a looking terrifying and diner with my niece, because now she's everywhere. And she's so excited to be like in Rome and all these other places with the movie. And uh, like, yeah, well, I don't care if I can, could have found actors 10% better, you know, like they were. That makes the movie all the more, obviously, personal and special to me. Thank you for that. We have time for two more I think you're right. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. I think it's interesting because I think there 
relationship is sort of, he's, he's trying to assert himself there in a way and has this conversation and it's not really, I think when he leans into it, but I think that there's a parallel to what's going on in the school and in yeah, the I totally life. I think playing some kind of rougher sex just now that in the back of his mind there was like a, a young woman who was sexually assaulted just made it less of a fantasy, yeah. We'll have question right here. There's a long list that you can find. Yeah, I Website it's always hard for me to answer, not, not this sounds arrogant, like, I don't know what, but when people say, and I get this often, um, be, I get, how do I know you, what are you, have been to things, and um, my favorite was, and I always, I never know what to say, because, and this sounds arrogant, but I've done a bunch of work, and, and, and I don't know, and I always want to say, well, I know inside your head looking out through your eyes, I don't know what, you saw, and I know you're not saying this, you're just saying, oh, wait, uh, but somebody wants to see more. Well, who knows? Uh, that's, that's an American interpretation of that question. <laughs> but somebody said to me once, she goes, she said, I know you're in things, and what, what are you in? And I said, well, I mean, it's embarrassing for me to work funny and all this. But she goes, come on, I know you've been in what have you been in? So I said, well, this, and that, she said, no, no, I'm going through my resume, you know? And, and at a certain point, she goes, I swear to God, she says, Okay, dude, I get it. You're in movies. And I said, Wait, you asked me? Okay, what? Uh, yeah, so a bunch of things. But um, coming up, though, a uh, thing on Netflix uh, called Geary Haji. I'm really proud of it. I'm excited about it. Uh, How's that? Uh, January, I think. It's on the BBC right now. If, you're, if you live in England and you're here on vacation, <laughs> when you go back home, it's really. It was, Because even if he doesn't like a moment, you're still somewhat invested in him. And that is the, the 
that the movie hat I did with uh, with the uh, young Justin Long over here. Um, one last thing I want to say, just because you're fucking right up, is so we had to change the title from Safe Spaces to After Class, which is like this hideous thing our distributor made us do because movies that start with A make more money because people on VOD look through alphabetical order, which is kind of interesting. But I suggested uh, our parts are not in the So anyway, if you happen to enjoy this or know anyone who would, uh, I, I have to. I don't I never stop my second about their titles. Like, our is my grandmother's dying. It, will, it is available on iTunes uh, right now for pre-order, which I guess helps us, and it's going to be out December 6th, and I think in Boston and nine other cities, and, and available to be downloaded, and uh, that show would be lovely, and if not, we appreciate your money tonight. And screening to work and the festivals of the Thank you so much. So nice. Thank you for being here. Thank you all. We'll see you.